Hi, I'm B. Today I'm going to create a butterfly embroidery hoop for my grandma's birthday gift. Grandma, if you're watching this, happy birthday, I love you. As always, if you want to please the Pandaverse, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Next week I'll be creating a Halloween face paint video, so you don't want to miss out. So why a butterfly hoop? Well, for starters, my grandma loves butterflies. It's something we have in common. For us, they're a reminder of everything we have overcome and that sometimes life is hard, but other times you get to grow wings and you get a fly. So I knew whatever I made, I wanted it to have butterflies on it. I also had the limitation of needing it to be able to fit in my mailbox and be paid for by stamps. So I decided to make some hoop art. Now, which type of hoop art should I pick? There are so many different varieties. Ultimately, I decided on embroidery because I do have some experience with that. But if anyone has a recommendation of any type of hoop art I should work on next, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Now that I've decided on what I wanna create, it's time to gather my materials. First up, I pick out my fabric. I picked the black one based off of the texture. I thought the loose weave would make it a little bit easier to get the embroidery floss to stitch through it. And black is a neutral color that'll let other colors pop. Next, I head over to my pegboard to pick out the colors. My favorite color scheme is analogous color schemes. Analogous color schemes just mean that they're next to each other on the color wheel. Some examples include compositions with red, yellow, orange, or yellow, green, blue. Personally, I have a tendency to favor blues, greens, and purples in my art. I also knew I wanted to do green to blue to purple to black ombre across the butterfly wing to give a really sharp contrast with like a bright green and a dark black. So really move your eye around the composition. Eventually, I decided on black, dark eggplant purple, dark navy blue, a medium marine blue, and a bright seafoam green. My pegboard is made from my spare embroidery floss. It's made from anything that got left over from past projects. It used to be organized into a rainbow, but I haven't got around to hanging it up and it may have tipped over and all of the pieces fell off of it. So it's not as pretty as it was before. I mean, it's not a visual disaster, but the rainbow was just more aesthetically satisfying. Now that I've picked up my colors, it's time to grab the rest of my embroidery supplies. This is gonna include my embroidery tubes, which contain needles, needle threaders, and scrap threads, my neck lights, a pair of scissors, thimbles, and extra wooden clips and needles. I throw everything into my current project bucket, so that way it's easily transported to wherever I decide to work on it. Now it's time to cut my fabric or try to. <laughs> Anyone who's ever used a pair of scissors knows that some things require sharper scissors. In hindsight, I did cut the fabric too big, but better too much fabric than too little fabric. After cutting out the fabric, I realized I had better not try to stitch this butterfly freehand or it's gonna end up lopsided and crooked and look like a toddler did it. So I hop onto my digital art program and use the mirror tool and painstakingly draw out these beautiful butterfly silhouettes. I make them as perfect as I possibly can, but any sort of outline butterfly clip art probably would have worked just as well. After I printed out my butterfly outlines that I painstakingly worked on, I realized I'm not gonna be able to trace these onto the black fabric. Normally what I do is I take a light source, put the outline on top of that, and then put the fabric on top of the outline, and then I can see the outline on the fabric and I can trace it with Sharpie. But I can't use Sharpie on black fabric. So I get on the Google and somebody recommends that you trace it onto tissue paper, pin the tissue paper onto the fabric, and then stitch through the tissue paper. So off I went to pick up some tissue paper to trace my drawing onto. I decided to trace the Morpho butterfly instead of the Monarch because I didn't know how the black thread was gonna look on the black fabric. I also decided to use the hoop to help secure the tissue paper onto the fabric so that way it was less likely to move around when I'm stitching. Now I have all my supplies, I'm ready to embroider so I kick my puppy out of the chair she's sleeping in and start stitching. I used a single thread to stitch in the outline, but I was only able to do the very most basic before the tissue paper started ripping off all by itself. As you can imagine, this was incredibly frustrating for me and I needed a timeout. However, during my timeout, I saw her. It was my white gel pen. She was gonna come save the day. I'm thinking this is gonna work. I'm gonna be able to use it and guess what? It did. So I freehanded a few more of those details that I had previously spent hours working on and I felt a little better.
For those of you who don't know, embroidery floss is just six threads twisted together. So you can separate them. I'll generally separate them into at least three threads a piece because that does allow for better blending. If I want to make it even smoother transition, then I will separate it down to two or even single strands. So that way I can get a more gentle and cohesive ombre. Next, I got to work with the actual embroidery. I started with a dark eggplant color, creating a border around the butterfly, leaving room for blending in the black and the blue on either side. After I finished with the eggplant color, I start with my marine blue. I'm using the marine blue because like the purple, it is in between two colors. So the eggplant was in between black and a navy blue, and the marine is in between the navy and the green. And so this allows for an easier ombre effect. So when I put the navy in there I'm going to be able to blend stitch into not only the purple but also into this marine blue as opposed to just going from one into the other. I do use a needle threader. If you don't have one and you struggle with getting thread through the eye of the needle, I 100% recommend them. <laughs> they make the whole process so much more pleasant because I'm not fighting to thread my needle. So after I finished my marine, I moved into the navy, blending it into both the purple and the marine color. And then I move into the sea foam. The sea foam I do in two stages. I do one with three threads, and then I go back in with single stitch threads to make it easier for our eyes to follow the ombre over the colors. Here you can see what it looks like with just the chunky green with the three threads and what it looks like when I add the single threads. Adding in those single threads make it look so much better. Finally, I'm adding in the black. This black fabric and this black thread are too close to the same black. There are so many different shades of black. It's not often that you get two blacks that are the same shade of black. So I'm gonna need to do something about that. First, I just tried to add some highlights in there, but it wasn't enough. I decided that I was just gonna have to outline the whole thing. I did end up leaving just the highlight on one side of the body because the green does create enough of a contrast, but I did end up doing an entire white peripheral. If I decide to make this project again, I would have picked a different color, probably just a deep purple or maybe even faded into like a pink color or possibly even just extended the purple that I had out further because there was enough of a distinct difference between that purple and the black. Once all of that was completed, it was time to add in the final touches, cut off the excess fabric and close up the back. To be honest, out of all of the embroidery pieces I have made, this one is my favorite. I love the analogous ombre, I love the color scheme, I love how meaningful it is to me, and I really hope my grandma loves it. Let's check out those final results. I love to see art inspiration, so if you want to tag me on Instagram, I'd love to see your art. If you like this video, check out another one. Bye.